what's driving the growth in in DeFi at the moment, and is it based upon some fundamentals? So I, I think what's driving the growth is 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 the ecosystems. The, the I mean the the it, the ecosystems and the engineering has been, has benefited from kind of the we we underestimate you know we overestimate what we can do in ten years and we underestimate what what we can do in ten. And and we're kind of starting to see the garden blossom of of engineering that's been done five years ago, and and so I think that we're going to have this continual composability Lego blocks being built and built and built. But I fear that you know while sixty five billion may sound like a lot of money, uh, that is a very very small piece of the capital markets. And and I would say that's mostly retail driven, and I'm going to include family offices in retail. Family offices, in in, in my opinion, is not uh, institutional, and and really that's kind of when 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 we start getting the Pimcos of the world and the the pension funds of the world uh, deploying capital into this. Uh, that's when we cross the chasm, but but we're really kind of just playing with ourselves. The evangelists are really doing that, and and I think that there are a few things specifically that need to happen to get there. Uh, one, uh, which, which interests me, uh, which surprises me, uh, that, that that it hasn't been addressed more, but but the concept of finality. So, so basically, you know, trade finality in the legacy uh, financial market so is is table stakes, and with probabilistic blockchains and concepts like optimistic optimistic rollbacks or rollups, where you could have you know seven days before you have trade finality, I think that's very uh, difficult for an institution or a custodian like a J.P. Morgan or a Bank of New York Mellon or a State Street. They have to have finality uh, before really custodying these assets. Um, so, so I think that once we start having technologies that have that finality at layer two, uh, I think that'll be very important. W one example of that is, is a group called NAMI, which is a, a layer two scaling solution that's focused specifically on uh, having instant finality versus kind of the seven day look backs of optimistic rollups. So let's talk about the the thesis that you have going into NFTs, how you how you kind of divide out the different types of assets that, that yep. are available today yep. within that space. So, so first and foremost, uh, what I want to dispel to the to the world, and I think a lot of people in the space, and, and maybe you'll you'll agree, is is the concept that you know these are overpriced JPEGs. Um, so 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 I think that we need to, and and I get all the cute things from Crypto Kitties back in the day to to what's being built now with the punks and whatnot, and they're lovely, um, but we're not acquiring them for artistic, we're not acquiring uh, NFTs for our own artistic desires. What I'm much more interested in is kind of the infrastructure around them. So uh, kind of first and foremost, kind of like going low into the protocols, uh, we're, we're very much interested in kind of the, the long-term storage issues. So uh, as you've been working with Filecoin and IPFS, uh, I think that uh, really getting the plumbing done properly uh, in, in kind of the storage of the assets and, and kind of the data markets of tomorrow, uh, we're very interested. Uh, so, and you're so doing that would, through your, your venture arm, right? Is that separate yeah, to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we, we're large believers uh, in the uh, implementation of IPFS and Filecoin. Um, and, and, and we've taken a huge position there, uh, you know, years ago. And, uh, and, and we are watching kind of just data markets evolve. And so basically we want to understand kind of how data markets evolve and how we can improve infrastructure at that point. Secondarily, 
uh, we consider kind of the NFT being, I would say, just part of a brand. And so if you're AC Milan or if you're, you know, John Doe, the country music singer, or if you are, uh, I would say, uh, you know, Mattel, the toy maker, each of those have uh, various aspects of, of, of additional uh, ways that the population sees them. You know, Mattel, you literally have a brick and mortar toy. Uh, the, the singer would have music. And, and basically, we want to figure out how we can, you know, incorporate this into branding and social media and, and, and have things where you can have access to the digital NFT, but that's really the deed to the brick and mortar asset. Uh, and, and, and with that, we can embed, you know, business logic that if it's sold from primary creator to secondary buyer and the secondary buyer sells it to the tertiary buyer embedding the business logic that the primary creator is paid on that secondary sale a lot of time in venture we're, we're building for the 10 year olds uh but i don't see this crossing over to adults per se and i want to see how we can target the adults so uh, I'm, I'm curious and I'm open and, and kind of all of the NFT companies that I talk to, uh, I, I ask them, how do they target somebody who has not bought Bitcoin or Ether uh, uh, or, or any other crypto asset for that matter? So, so I think that that's another question we're trying to solve for and, and to see if there's any traction in solving that question. Do you think that play to earn will have its have a little, little bit more latitude in terms of who can participate. Oh, and, and I think that there's got to be a monetary threshold as well. You know, if if Junior is playing to earn the $20 sword versus, you know, John Doe, Junior's dad, buying the million dollar digital art work or, or or song or you know digital right um and and is doing that so that they can have a bond like uh yield uh you know a monthly income that, that those are two distinct animals and and i think that uh i think there should be some type of de minimis you know maybe it's under 500 dollars um that gets kind of the kids who are earning the the game you know, uh, so, so or earning the assets, um, you know, out of it. So, so I think that we could solve that with maybe a, you know, a thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar de minimis annually on on various toys. Um, but I think you, you're right. I mean, a a, a a royalty is not much different than a bond. When when, when you think, you know, if you're if you're acquiring it for the ongoing cash flows. You, you, it's, it's the same animal. Well, look, Andrew, I was like over the moon to find out that I actually had 40 more minutes with you. I only thought I had 20, so I was really rushing at the beginning and then I had, I had a whole hour. So thank you. I don't know if you knew that, but it was <laughs> you great. didn't, th thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. All worked it. Out. Now, I know we went a little bit all over the place, but I, I can see in the chat, people were, were loving the direction of it. I'm really grateful of your time. Uh, and I know that you're going to be one of the people that will be leading the space um, and hopefully bringing in some of that institutional money, whether it's directly or indirectly. So thanks for your time, Andrew. Godspeed. Thank you, Jamie. Be well, Bye. everyone.